Hi, welcome to Mind.Ease, where today we will be discussing ADHD. ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is a neurodevelopmental disorder that is highly heritable. It was once thought of as a childhood disorder, but is now acknowledged as one that persists in adulthood as well. Today we have Dr. Jacob Palatinkel that will be explaining to us what exactly ADHD is along with its treatments. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is a complex disorder. It not only involves symptoms of inattention, hyperactivity, or impulse control, but there are other symptoms related to mood an individual can experience. According to a recent twin study, there is approximately 91% heritability factor. Individuals with ADHD can have other comorbid disorders. Some primary disorders that individuals may have along with ADHD are anxiety and bipolar disorder. A recent research by Healthline showed there are 6.1% of American children between the ages of 5 to 17 who are treated with medication for ADHD symptoms. How is ADHD treated and diagnosed? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is diagnosed by a psychiatrist, psychologist, or any other clinicians in the mental health field who are specializing in ADHD. Some of the rating skills that can be utilized in aiding the diagnosis of ADHD is the Connor Rating Scale, the SNAP, or the Vanderbilt. The Vanderbilt is most commonly used because it's in the public domain. There are two versions of the Vanderbilt Rating Scale. One is the parent version, and the other one is the teacher version. Children who are in elementary school Generally, the teachers will contact the parents and tell them that their child is not able to stay seated or impulsive or hyper. This is usually how the beginning of treatment starts or the beginning of the diagnostic process. Uh, there are other tools also in the diagnosis process, such as the continuous uh, performance test. And if you really want to understand the internal functioning of a child and to really differentiate attention deficit from other uh, learning disorders, they might even go to the extent of going to a neuropsychologist who could really understand and tweak out what other comorbid symptoms or struggles the child has. Are there different types of ADHD? And if so, what are they? And how do you differentiate them from one another? ADHD is diagnosed based on the symptom presentation. There are three types of ADHD according to the DSM-5 or the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. There is the inattention type, there is the hyperactive impulsive type, and there is the combined type. The most common ADHD diagnosis is ADHD combined type, where the children or the adult have both symptoms present. How is ADHD treated and what other modalities are available besides medication? Research has shown that ADHD is primarily and initially treated with medication that has a better outcome versus any other treatment. The initial treatment if there is no contraindication, the medication used for treating ADHD symptoms are stimulants such as Concerta, Adderall, Vyvanse, Focalin. And individuals who cannot tolerate stimulants because of other comorbid disorders, they have the option of going on non-stimulants such as Tratera, Kelbre. Uh, but research has shown over and over again that the stimulant uh, should be the primary uh, treatment and has a better outcome versus any other treatment. Now besides medications, there are biobehavioral treatments, especially for children with behavioral issues. Uh, and there are parent training classes, there's PCIT for children of smaller age. Uh, PCIT stands for Parent-Child Interaction Therapy, where the parents are taught or trained how to uh, modulate their children's behavior or modify their behavior. And there is school accommodation to help kids who are struggling academically. There are something called a 504 or an IEP, Individualized Educational Plan. These are all things to put in place so the child can succeed academically. You mentioned about contraindications when using stimulants. So which medical conditions do you watch out for before starting someone on stimulants? If an individual has underlying seizure disorder or head injury, you generally need to obtain a clearance from neurology before starting stimulant because sometimes uh, stimulant can exacerbate seizure symptoms. The same goes for uh, cardiac 
anomalies such as congenital heart disease, uh, valvular heart disease such as uh, stenosis or prolapse, or family history of sudden cardiac death or arrest. Individuals with these histories should uh, get a cardiology clearance before initiating uh, stimulants and also follow up at least once a year uh, if there is significant history. Are there any specific psychiatric disorders you're cautious of before starting someone on stimulants? Individuals who are untreated with bipolar disorder or psychosis, you will closely monitor. As mentioned earlier, ADHD is highly comorbid, so individuals can suffer from both mood disorder and ADHD. But the rule of thumb is that you treat the mood disorder first before treating the ADHD symptoms. Otherwise, patient may experience mood dysregulation or activation of their underlying mood disorder. Are there any specific disorders that often co-occur with ADHD? ADHD can co-occur with autism spectrum disorder, bipolar disorder, and other learning disorders. Generally, when you treat the ADHD symptoms with medications, these learning disorders can also improve, especially symptoms like uh, dyslexia and other learning disorders. So you'll see an improvement uh, in the child's grades and the collateral obtained from the teachers once the treatment is started. Do symptoms of ADHD typically differ between the genders? In girls, we see more inattention and anxiety symptoms. In boys, we see more of poor impulse control and hyperactivity. For the same reasons, girls are underdiagnosed and undertreated for the ADHD symptoms. On our previous video about anxiety, we received a few questions in the comments, which we'll be taking a few minutes to answer now. One of the questions that came in is that, how to manage symptoms of anxiety on a day-to-day -day living? Um, does anxiety ever get cured? Can medication help? And what other self-help is available. Anxiety, just like any other disorders, is treatable with medication and therapy. One of my favorite modalities of therapy is psychoanalysis or psychodynamic focus therapy. Medication helps to manage the anxiety symptoms and make the symptoms more manageable and livable with. When you experience panic symptoms, it may seem like the world is ending and everything around you is coming to an end. Understanding what the triggers are, where the panic attack is happening from, it's important and one need to realize and after a while learn how to cope with it when they're not with a therapist or when they're alone, such as deep breathing exercises, grounding themselves, and just talking back to themselves and saying this is not the end, this shall pass as well. One of the questions that came in was uh, what's the difference between anxiety and panic disorder? As mentioned earlier that we all struggle with anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis. When it becomes acute, where the individual experiences hyperventilation, shortness of breath, chest discomfort, that's considered a panic attack. And panic attack can last from a, a few seconds to a few minutes. That's primarily the diagnostic criteria of what the symptoms usually present and the difference between generalized anxiety disorder and panic disorder. But understanding oneself, what the triggers are, and what thought triggers such panic attacks, what situations uh, trigger these panic attacks is really important. So one can avoid uh, these symptoms. Along with symptoms of hyperventilation, individuals also may experience disassociation or feeling like they're detached from themselves or observing themselves from an outside view. Uh, these symptoms are all uh, manageable with medication and therapy. Uh, so therapy and medication combined has a better outcome versus one alone. There have been times where patients are seen and there is no clear-cut answer to why this individual is experiencing anxiety at this time. There are also heritability factors to anxiety just like many other psychiatric disorders. Individuals who's had multiple traumatic events including sexual and physical abuse victims, or substance abusers may also experience anxiety as secondary symptoms. There are personality traits such as neurosis, where an individual experiences anger, apprehension, 
elevated anxiety, and poor modulation of emotions. Once again, having neurosis, it's not a personality disorder, it's a personality trait. Working with a good therapist, either a psychodynamic therapist or a CBT therapist, with finding a good therapist, either a psychodynamic focused or a CBT therapist, one can work through their internal conflicts and reduce or alleviate their anxiety symptoms. Thank you for joining us today at Mind.Ease. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down below and we'll be sure to answer them in future videos. Thank you.